Up next is Jeff Gordon. He drives the number 24 drive to end hunger Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. And uh, Jeff, uh, certainly, uh, you know, with your uh, sponsorship, uh, uh, with the fine folks that you are working with, I uh, understand that, uh, that yesterday uh, you helped deliver a millionth meal uh, to someone on behalf of Drive to End Hunger, and that is amazing. Just talk about, about that and uh, that experience, and uh, then I'll ask you a racing question. Yeah, I get to do a lot of uh, really cool things. I mean, it's opened my eyes uh, up so much to, you know, this cause and how many millions of people are dealing with hunger issues in, in America. Uh, and because of that, we get to do some pretty cool things. But yesterday was definitely one of the highlights. Um, a woman named Frida, who uh, lives in Rockingham County, very nearby to here in North Carolina, uh, who relies on Meals on Wheels to deliver her meals every day to her. And, uh, you know, she's, she's the classic story of, of individuals that need those meals uh, desperately because she worked so hard to feed her family uh, throughout her whole life and gave everything uh, for them. And now she relies on those meals. Uh, and, and it was pretty cool to be able to deliver that one millionth meal of, for Meals on Wheels uh, to her uh, in, in the state of North Carolina. So that was uh, very special and spent some time with her in her home with her family. And um, she was such a sweet lady. Uh, she, you know, when you live this close to Martinsville, they can, they said that at times they can actually hear the cars going around here. But uh, her, her husband uh, who had passed away was a big NASCAR fan. A lot of her family members, big NASCAR fans. She, uh, she's a big uh, Richard Petty fan even brought up Lee Petty's uh, name so yeah that was very special to be able to, to do that and, and, and to help somebody like that thank you very much Jeff and thank you for all you do for uh, not only the sport for the, but for the people across the world here I mean that let's go to Steve Post and then we'll go to Marty Smith Steve Post Motor Racing Network Jeff Historically speaking, Martinsville, 1949, Red Byron won a race here, won the championship. It's been very key in a lot of your championship runs. Can you describe it historically? Is there a race, a moment, or something that Martinsville really played a factor in one of those championships that you had in the past? And a follow-up on that is, how important is it for you this weekend, knowing that you're back in the battle again and knowing it's been a good track for you? Well, I can say, honestly, never uh, has it been more important than it is this weekend. I mean, I, I definitely think it's played an important role, and I haven't gone back through the stats and history of, of what this track meant to my championship runs in the past. I just knew that it's always been a track that I've had confidence in. Our cars are good. Our team is solid here, and, and we come in here, you know, believing that, that we have a, sh a chance at winning and, and either – if it was under the old points format of, of trying to build a lead or one that we tried to gain some points if we were a little bit behind. Um, so to me this weekend, though, with the way this format is, uh, you know, don't get me wrong. I, I, I don't feel like we're in a must win, have to win situation. I think we're in a situation where this is a great track where we can win at. But getting a, a, a really good finish and getting it started off right is also uh, almost as, as important. And so we're, we're very focused on this track. We tested here, and we, uh, we've had a good day so far, and hopefully we can end the day on, on a positive note and you know, just continue to carry that momentum that we have um, you know, here in Martinsville and, and you know, really kind of put our stamp on, on our championship uh, contention and chances for Homestead. Go all the way in the back, Marty Smith, and then we'll come up here to uh, uh, Jeff. Thanks, so Marty had a question. Go ahead, Marty. Marty Smith, ESPN. Jeff, your teammates are done. How does the fact that you have gone from four, three, I guess three teammates in the chase with you to being alone, how does that impact your effort? And do you feel like you're on an island at all? I, I don't. I mean, I feel like, you know, a lot of things don't change. I mean, we always share information, work together, have our debriefs. Crew chiefs are constantly talking about setups and cars and how we get better as we go into each race weekend, uh, our own theories. 
and and I feel like that uh, that will continue. I think the you know the, the the only difference is that we're not racing them for the championship. So um, you know how you race one another when you race for a championship. Obviously, uh, every every split second counts, and and you race one another extremely hard. And uh, I think that if those guys have a chance at winning, they're they're still going to you know race hard. And beyond that, they're very supportive. Uh, they've, 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 you know, mentioned it to me um, already uh, of how much they want to see us get that championship. So it's great to have their support. And you know, we've been in this position before to to help. Uh, certainly with the 48, and and you know, we do all that we can to to give them valuable information by being competitive uh, each weekend. And, and then, you know, if, if the opportunity presents itself, I mean, it's just one of those things where, you know, on a restart, you, instead of going down there and, you know, eight tires being better than four, you just, you know, you, you race them hard, but you race them clean and, and you know, hope that, um, you know, we just hope that we put ourselves in position with a fast enough race car to, uh, uh, you know, to be able to race up front. And, and if we're racing those guys and, you know, hopefully we just don't, don't, you know, rub on one another or, uh, race one another, you know, so hard to where we could cause problems to happen. Go to Jeff Hood, and then we'll go to uh, a man right here, and then to Justin. Hey, Jeff. Jeff Hood of RacingToday.com. Um, NBC returns to the sport to cover NASCAR in 2015. You hosted Saturday Night Live on NBC back in 2003. I believe you're friends with Lauren Michaels, the show's creator. If given the chance, would you consider hosting SNL again? I mean, it was an opportunity of a lifetime, and, and I had a blast. I was also scared to death to do it, but uh, I'm glad that I did it. Uh, if I had any requests, I'd, I'd be, you know, just let me go do a, a Ricky Funk skit. You know, that, that's, uh, that, that was my favorite thing that I did on the show, and I thought it was pretty funny. And, uh, you know, I, I would love to, to get the opportunity to do that again. But if they ask you, it's one of those things where you can't turn it down. If you're asked, you have to do it. It's just, it's just too much of a, of an honor and, and an opportunity that uh, you can't say no to. Go ahead, right here. Charles Rourke, Star News. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, after the, you gave the the millionth meal, we had a telethon, and your hats brought in about two thousand extra dollars to that telethon that you signed. So, thank you for that. How does it feel when you go in the community and you? And it and it pays it forward so so much. Yeah, that's great. That's uh, I did not know that. That's wonderful news. Uh, you know, I mean, that's that's what we're trying to do with this program. It's not just fundraising. It's it's getting the word out there for more people to understand. Um, you know how serious this issue is, as, and and we need more volunteers. Uh, we need. Um, you know, more people to be aware of it, to, to really get involved and make an impact. And, and it starts in, in small local communities and it spreads throughout the country and uh, every, every little bit, you know, helps. And I think obviously Frida and her story uh, and how important that meal was to her is, is you know, the, the greatest way to spread that word. Is it better than having a beer sponsor? <laughs> I've never had a beer sponsor, but I would say yes. I'm my own beer sponsor, so uh, yeah, I uh, I think this is way better. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Justin. Jeff, uh, three of the eight guys that are still left in it have won a championship earlier in their career. Do those guys, those three, have an advantage, or because of the new format, really an advantage is eliminated? Okay, explain this one to me again. Th three of the eight that are left yeah. have won a championship, you included. Right. So it's a me, Keslowski, and Matt. So um, yeah, you know, I, it's so hard to compare because, I mean, my championships were under a completely different format. Um, all of them were under a different format than this one this year. So I don't know if it gives an advantage to anybody. I think the best team that has handled pressure well, that uh, these upcoming tracks suit them well, those are the ones with the advantage. You know, I, I think there's, it's obvious there's been some surprises uh, as to who's in there and who's not. Uh, but I think the way I look at it, the, the four that I feel like have been 
the the really strongest teams all year long are in there, and that's uh, you know the twenty two, the two, the four, and, and ourselves. So, um, you know, I'm not saying that means that's going to be who makes it to Homestead, but uh, those those to me are the the teams that have the best chance. Other questions? Nate Ryan, front row, and then Deb. Nate Ryan, USA Day Sports. Uh, Jeff, about say five years ago, it seemed like well. Um, didn't seem like there, there was a stretch uh, where either Jimmy or Denny won every race here, I think eight straight races, and you were in the mix and Tony was in the mix, but beyond that, there weren't a lot, a lot of the other guys who were really challenged, and now you know, Kurt Busch won in the spring, uh, Kenseth was strong in both races last year, and you, you kind of had a top five uh, the last race here that was uh, had some uh, unfamiliar names. Um, does it seem like this place is more of a jump ball, and is there any reason for why the dominance of maybe 48, 24, 11 has faded a little bit over the last few years? I mean, you know, the competition is always trying to get better, and you watch your competitors, you see what they're doing. It's amazing the spy photos going on around this garage area these days of, of how, how we're getting information, whether it's the cars on the track or in the garage area. And so when, when you look at your teammates or your, your competitors and you look at um, somebody who starts – to do very well, you start to look at those those details as to what it takes. So um, sometimes it's it's things they're doing with their cars uh, and their setups. But the spring was a strange race because Goodyear uh, changed the tire, and that tire I know for me was very far off. I, I just we really struggled with that tire. We were wearing left rear tires out. Um, the track wasn't laying rubber down. And it was a very odd race for us. And that's why we decided to test here. And then they went and switched the tire back to, it's more of a 2012 tire, um, but similar to what we had here at the end of last year. And, you know, it really brought my car back to life uh, to, to what we had that worked so well. So that's sometimes all it takes is just changing a tire that can throw your setup that's worked so well or a driving style that you have and throw it off and bring others into the mix. But uh, I think, you know, everybody is always challenged by Martinsville and how difficult this track is. And, you know, the, the, the top teams and drivers look at that challenge and, and take it on and say, you know, we don't want this track to be uh, you know, our Achilles. We want, we want this track to, to be a track that we can be a real factor at. And, you know, I, I, I look at, at Matt in that sense. I mean, this is a track where he struggled. And then, you know, uh, that year he, he really was strong. And he changed to a different team that obviously showed you that that team had something that worked really well here. Denny's been very successful here. And they were able to, to capitalize on, on that as well. So sometimes it is a setup. Sometimes it's in how you produce your car. Uh, and, and sometimes it's just looking at data and driving styles as well. Other questions for Jeff? Deb right there. Jeff, Deb Williams, RaceToday.com. Ten years ago, this race, we had the Hendrick Plane tragedy. And is even though this track has been so good for you, as far as victories are concerned, and I'm sure you always think about it when you head this way, but have you thought about it more this particular race, and is there always a pain in your heart when you head to Martinsville? Yeah, especially this particular one. Um, you know, and, and this, we celebrated, uh, you know, the memories of those fo folks uh, this week by recognizing, you know, this being the 10th anniversary, we want to to celebrate because they brought so much, you know, to people's lives and, and they're missed so, so much that, um, you know, they, they we had a, a whole memorial type event this week. So it's certainly on our minds and we've got um, that, that decal on the car that, that is going to, uh, again, bring focus and attention to that because we never want to forget them. And it was a that was a tough tough day for all of us, and you know we uh, every time we come back here we uh, we try to pay tribute uh, at this particular race to those families. Uh, you know it was good to see some of their faces of, of those you know that uh, you know have had to move on and 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 live their lives uh, with with you know a very very heavy heart. So. We try to honor them by by doing something special, and and you know I mean the ultimate would be a one two three four finish for Hendrick Motorsports. That that to me I don't think you could uh, do any better tribute than that. So that's our goal for the weekend. Thank you. 
Right there. Go ahead. Jordan. Uh, Jordan Monder at Devil Register and B. Uh, the grandfather clock trophy turns 50 years old this weekend. Uh, I've been asking a lot of the drivers, you know, what it, what it means to them and knowing all the implications of this race and all the emotions that are tied to this weekend for, for you guys at Hendrick, what would uh, being able to add another grandfather clock to your, to your collection mean to you? Yeah. Um, by the way, Frida had a, a, a Ridgeway clock in her, in her living room. It was so cool. I, I love that. Uh, sorry, just a little note. Um, that trophy is, is extremely special. It's unique and one of a kind. And, you know, when you get the opportunity to, to have that clock delivered to your home or to the shop, uh, it's very, very special. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I, I cherish every one, and I, I look forward to that opportunity. And we've got a great opportunity this weekend. And um, everybody always says, oh, man, do you ever have trouble finding a place for those? No. No, we can win more and more and more, and we'll never have a, a problem finding a good place for it that it's going to be well-respected and, and uh, displayed properly. Any additional questions? Well, Jeff, thank you for coming in, and good luck this weekend. Thank you.